Hey everyone, the name is Eric Dorn. Today we're talking about a strange type I call the everythinger. And who is an everythinger? An everythinger is a person that relates to every single of the 16 personality types. No matter what personality description, they will agree with it. No matter what personality test they take, they will get a different result every time. No matter what the video they listen to, they can relate to any single personality type. Whenever they meet somebody on the street, they can feel intimately connected to that person. Very quickly, very spontaneously, they can relate relate to anybody around them. They can feel they identify with every single trait and with every single person. They feel connected to humanity as a whole. They build bridges in conflicts and they say, oh, I relate to that and I understand where you are coming from and you see where you are coming from. And let's just all get along. Let's just all see how we all agree. Let's just focus on our agreements. This is a highly agreeable type. I call this the super feeler. The super feeler is a person that has an exceptional or a superhuman ability to build bridges and to warp and transform an understanding of something, to connect with anything, to relate to anyone, to build a relatability or connection with anyone. So the super feeler, the everythinger, is interesting in this ability to just connect to everyone and everything around them, perhaps even to the emotional state of a rock. The problem with everything is, um, you guessed it, their low developed thinking ability. So a lot of time this is the type that will fear conflict, they will fear critical thinking, they will avoid having to look at the data and the numbers, they will avoid competition, they will avoid any situation, any argument, any source of disagreement by trying to build relatability. Whenever somebody disagrees with them, they will find a way to relate to and agree with the other person. Whenever another person is trying to compete with them, they will find a way to build a collaboration and to work together. Whenever somebody is trying to look at what they are saying critically, they are trying to apply sympathy. But I'm just explaining this, or it's just my feelings, it's just my emotions, it's just who I am, it's just my experiences. A lot of time, the super feeling type is a person who has an imbalance or a repressed thinking function. That means they have struggled with often all their life setting goals, sticking to goals and applying critical thinking and perfectionism to their ideas. They have struggled to perfect or improve on themselves or to look at themselves from a negative viewpoint. They often see the positive in everyone around them, including themselves. The problem with the everything is they will relate to every single personality type as long as the description is positive. And as soon as the description starts to get negative, they will trail off. No, I don't have that. I don't have that problem. I don't struggle with this. This, this is not me at all. I must be another type. <laughs> a lot of time, the super feeler is a person that simply wants everything to be harmonious, agreeable, positive, rich, warm, happy, comfortable. It's a desire to keep and to maintain a, a, an agreeable state with other people to make sure everyone feels connected. It can be for the super feeler that the study of typology causes them to feel ultimately disconnected from other people. If I do these things, if I am different from other people, then I can't relate to them. Then I'm not allowed to see myself in their shoes. I'm not allowed to have empathy with them. I'm not allowed to feel the same way they do. A lot of time it's uh, that this type dislikes the application of logic in any form. It's that they don't like putting rules for things. They don't like coming up with restrictions. They don't like when people say only this type or... Uh, this type is only that, or this rule behind keeps this type from being that type. They don't like the restrictions, they want things to be ambiguous. Often the problem is, if you make a trait too ambiguous, if you make a semantic uh, or a word too uh, open-ended, it loses all its meaning. If everybody is extroverted, then there is no point to studying extroversion. If everybody can be introverted, then why should we want to study introversion? If everybody can be both reserved and highly open at the same time, then why should we study reservedness or openness? What is the point? What is the meaning? It can be that a lot of time these uh, super feelers have the ability to create this uh, super ambiguity. This, uh, uh, they can go into the state where there is no point to anything. The study of the MBTI collapses when they discover that they were not ESFJs after all, but INTPs. The study of uh, typology has no purpose because they realize that, oh, 
an INTJ might just as well be an ISFP, depending on perspective or viewpoint. If we make reservedness mean something completely different than what it is normally applied as, then suddenly reservedness is uh, very ambiguous. So we create an ambiguity, we create a problem. How do we relate all these different definitions? A lot of time for the super feeler, every single definition is true at the same time. So the problem for the super feeler is the inability to identify correct or incorrect, true or false. Both things cannot be true. Both statements cannot be agreed upon. We cannot make every description positive. We cannot only talk about the good things. We cannot only talk about the skills or the abilities of a personality type. We have to also talk about the weaknesses. If there is a skill, there must be a weakness. If there is a positive trait to a person, there must also be an opposing negative one. We have to understand that this is the source, this is the key to typology and to almost any science. Everything in, its, in this world has some kind of opposite or some kind of uh, negative uh, contradiction <laughs> and uh, you have to be able to sort through these things critically and you have to be able to take a hard long look at yourself if you're not able to look at yourself critically if you're not able to admit to flaws or problems in yourself you're not suited for the study of typology if you don't want to learn these things if you don't want to admit to these things if you're not prepared to do it then there is no point to looking at yourself or introspection to begin with. So I would like to suggest some points of growth for the super feeling type. The first thing is after rain comes sunshine. The second is you have to embrace the good with the bad. Learn to for everything good you say about the person to also say something bad. Learn to recognize that for everything uh, good that happens in a day to also admit to some problems, to also talk about some issues. Learn to, with every disagreement, to also find an agreement. Learn to balance out the two with each other's. Learn to say, I relate to this, but I also don't relate to that. Learn to say, I agree with this, but I also disagree with that. Learn to say that I like this, but I also dislike that. Learn to make sure that you can balance out and admit to problems and issues and learn to use critical thinking as a way to ground your sympathy and your ability to relate to and connect with others. And of course, on the other end of everythinger, we have the nothinger, a person who relates to absolutely nothing, who fits in absolutely no box, who dislikes and disagrees with every single definition, who struggles with every single thing. Do you recognize yourself? Would you like a video on the nothinger? Let me know in the comments down below. Thanks everyone for watching and I hope to see you all in the next video.